Airspeed's alive. November 9901, contact regional departure, good day. Departure, good day, 9901. All right, switch into departure. Runway heading up to 2000. For 9000, information to you. Sustain 68, regional approach, good afternoon, information, Juliet's not current at Dallas Club, the altimeter's 3000, descend and maintain 5000. This is already a high stress time. You've gone from visual to instruments and you've just lost the familiar visual reference to the horizon and the ground. Now imagine encountering a distraction or an abnormal at this time. Is there already too much to do with ATC and cockpit duties right after takeoff? Or maybe you're getting caught by surprise flying VFR into IMC that you didn't know about. Your lack of training and education will likely be fatal in these preventable scenarios if you're not ready for it. This video is a continuation in a series and the material is getting progressively more real world and more difficult. Let's dive right into this one and get you the answers that you need. Dan Greider is here in Texas to teach this young CFI how to give an AQP flight review to these three pilots. Now we take that footage and show you how to teach this material if you're a CFI or how to ask for this material if you're not. AQP is a concept that the airlines use to give more training more often on the things that can kill you and Dan is using his airline instructor experience to apply this concept to general aviation. We in general aviation don't take recurrent training nearly as seriously as we should and those GA fatality statistics really show that. If you haven't seen the series from the beginning go back and watch parts one and two before continuing. That's where we set all of this up. We'll start off with a very important question. Do you know the Muffin Man? Just see you smile. We had a lot of fun flying and goofing off while filming this series, but we're going to these extraordinary lengths to get an important point across. We can do better than this. There's an AQP supplement document available on aviation101.com that outlines what's involved in one of these AQP flight reviews. Go download it, read through it, and you and your instructor can use it on your next flight review. Which, by the way, there's nothing that says you have to wait 24 calendar months to get your next flight review. I recommend an initial serious look at the material with your CFI as an initial review, and then a constant review and practice as often as you're able after that. Log your AQP work on the page provided in the document to show your voluntary efforts with this stuff and include it in with your insurance renewal. Can't hurt. The questions under each topic in the document are designed to get you thinking about the vast differences between your FAA check rides and real life scenarios. For each topic there's a series of questions and then a paragraph all about that topic that includes a sample accident report and a link to a video. That's all in that AQP document. If you want to streamline the AQP instruction I have a new product in my e-store that's an in-flight checklist for one of these AQP flight reviews. I'm actually using this very checklist in these videos and we just got the first shipment of notepads in. This notepad is for both pilots and instructors. It's got 50 sheets per notepad and I've already started using them on more flight reviews. So download that AQP doc and grab yourself some of those notepads and you're all set to start this graduate level grassroots continued education material. Helmets on. It's a rough road ahead. In the last video, we talked all about rejected takeoffs and how we can practice them. And in this video, we're talking about another big killer in general aviation, spatial disorientation. First, what is it? If you're unfamiliar, spatial disorientation in the context of aviation is basically when a pilot or a crew member loses their awareness to the orientation of the aircraft to the earth and thus can't effectively control the airplane. This fatal scenario doesn't seem to discriminate based on pilot experience level or ratings. Unfortunately, this is one of the main factors that led to the fatal crash of Kobe Bryant's helicopter earlier this year. The pilot was flying low on a foggy day and the pilot flew VFR up into IMC, lost his orientation to the ground, lost control of his bearings, and impacted the ground. It all happened really fast and that pilot was an instrument instructor. Another heartbreaking fatal accident in September of 2019 was a 17-year-old private pilot in Cessna 4658 X-ray taking a cross country at night from Fayetteville, Arkansas to McKinney, Texas. It was one of those smooth, clear skies VFR nights, but over the wooded areas of Arkansas with no ground lights and a black sky, this young man got disoriented and he impacted the ground. This one really got my attention because I was once that 17 year old kid taking night cross countries. So I'm excited about it. This one's kind of special because it's my dad. He got me into flying and then here I am giving him an AQP flight review 
uh, something that's completely centered around keeping the pilot alive. So we're going to go up and keep that alive. Uh, let's go ahead and check number one and two there. These stand for spatial disorientation day and night. Spatial disorientation is something that can, can bite you and you're least expecting it. I can tell you for a fact, taking off runway eight, going east at night on a clear night, when runway 1735, the perpendicular disappears underneath you, you kind of lose that horizon for a little bit. Transitioning from VMC to IMC can be a shocking sensation for a pilot who isn't prepared for it. Flying up into IMC on departure while also experiencing an abnormal is a quick way to get distracted. An abnormal is anything that can cause the pilot to become distracted from flying the aircraft. Remember that an abnormal is anything that causes the pilot to become distracted from their main job of aircraft control. This includes a normal ATC communication that maybe came at an inappropriate time, or minor cockpit situations like a passenger asking a question at an inappropriate time, or a legitimate systems failure. It could be any of these things. And abnormal does not necessarily mean that something is wrong. It means that something caused you to miss focus. If you're faced with climbing into IMC on an IFR departure, don't let anything distract you from watching those instruments and flying the airplane. Dan even pinged me on that one, and I let myself get distracted purely based on what he said. Here it is again in slow motion, and now I know why he did that. I think one of your circle breakers just blew. Check that out. Which one? They all look like they're in. I see what you did. I tried to distract you. You did for just a second. You looked down and started working on that. Yeah. Um, so that's something you could do to your guys. Right. Uh, give them some kind okay. of distraction. And then show them in the debrief later on, here's the distraction I gave you and here's what you did. I threw some abnormal scenarios and distractions at the pilots shortly after takeoff. Going up into the clouds, whether intentionally or not, is a big deal. Set a hard deck of 1000 AGL or so and practice solid aircraft control with zero distractions allowed below this point. CFIs can introduce an abnormal of any kind after takeoff and debrief the response after the flight, which is exactly what Dan did with me. Even if ATC calls you, let them wait until you are ready. Another technique that may help is using the words single pilot in your call sign or letting ATC know that you need some space after takeoff before a handoff or any new instructions. All right, you're going up into the goo now, so let's uh, get on the instruments. I'm looking outside, I'm your safety pilot. Okay. We just want to fly runway heading and keep that climb coming, right? Yep. You just accidentally went up into the soup. This is the situation right now. Ah. I think my pin rolled under the fire extinguisher. Can you grab that for me? Huh? You grab my pen for me. I think it went under the fire extinguisher. You took your eyes off the panel. Yeah. That was a trick. That was a trick. I let the pen slide right off my leg. And when you went for it, your hand pulled down on the yoke on the left side, and that caused us to go into the left bank. In the first few seconds after takeoff, if you rotate up into the goo, pay real close attention, and don't let anybody else distract you off your job of flying the airplane, whatever else it is. Spatial disorientation sets in when you look away and try to go back. That's when you're gonna get it. Right. So don't look away in the first place, no matter what it is. First thousand feet, be pretty focused on staying right on there, and that's the reason he did that to you. All right, looking good. And you just lost your PFD there. Okay. So if, if this were to happen in flight, what would you, what would be your first reaction here? My first reaction would be to level the airplane. That's precisely, the first thing. precisely. Because you don't want to be turning in a turn and then lose focus. And now you're trying to dick with other stuff, and you're exactly. trying to trying to fix the and problem. And I will be looking here. I've lost my. I have my airspeed, so I know I'm good here. I've got my AI, and I'm. I know I'm still climbing. Get, what I would do is I would climb to a safe altitude, and then I would start to diagnose the problem. Yeah. Step one is to is to fly the airplane. Right. Number one on the list is aviate. So if you lose this guy, you resort to what? Uh, we have a backup attitude indicator. Gotcha. I think one of your breakers popped. Did it? No. I smell electrical too. What's the deal? Oh. We don't have any breakers pops. Ammeter looks good. Not showing a, uh, any uh, initial signs of an electrical problem. All right. Excellent. You didn't take your eyes off the instruments for more than about a second and a half. That's very good. 
I screwed that up when Dan did it to me. He said the same thing, I think, when your breakers popped, and I said, really? <laughs> and I let the nose come down about two or three degrees. Gotcha. We're going to highlight that on camera. That was good. That was yeah, good. Miles, you did excellent, man. Excellent. All right, thank you. So if this happens, what would you do? This altitude, compass, right. uh, heading. What's another brilliant thing that you could do? There you go. You got everything you need right there, right? Right. You lose out of in flight. Out. That's precisely what you need to do. You've got that big, beautiful tool right in front of you. What else can you do? Right. There it is, right there. I'll be gone. The other side of that is if you're flying VFR and you find yourself in a situation where you've lost your visual reference out the windows, watch those instruments. Poor aeronautical decision making probably got you into that situation, but good aeronautical decision making can still get you out of it and save your life. Whether you accidentally went VFR into IMC, it's a dark night, whatever it is, Fly the plane first, tell ATC what's going on, declare an emergency, and do not look out the windows. Focus on those instruments and fly that airplane. You have an instant instrument rating as soon as you declare an emergency and confess to ATC exactly what the situation is. Do not look outside until it's safe to do so, and your life depends on that. What liberties are granted to you when you declare an emergency, and is there a specific reg that puts that in writing? Yes, 14 CFR 91.3b states, in an in-flight emergency requiring immediate action, the pilot in command may deviate from any rule of this part to the extent required to meet that emergency. Now, is there a penalty for declaring an in-flight emergency? Not at all. It unlocks all the resources when you use that magic E-word, and we shouldn't be afraid to use it. So a problem that we have here is you're under the hood, you're under the foggles, and I'm saying, stay on your instruments, stay on your instruments, stay on your instruments. Well, what happens when you're out there flying and you don't have a CFI sitting next to you saying, stay on your instruments, and you don't have a pair of foggles with you, and your VFR, and what does ATC tell you over and over and over again? Maintain VFR. Eyes outside. So you feel pressured to look outside, and I'm supposed to be VFR, I'm supposed to be VFR, I need to find that horizon. And you start to peer into the darkness out there, and you're not gonna find it if you're in a situation like that. Is have a pair of foggles ready in the airplane, put it on a lanyard around your neck, and have it there. And if you start to get into a situation where you're just, and you, and you feel compelled, you constantly feel compelled to look out the windshield, or first of all, this is an emergency situation if you're getting disoriented. Throw on those foggles, make sure you can fly the airplane. Put your blinders on and make sure that's all you're going to look at. That just forces you to look at your instruments. Forces you to look yeah. at your instruments, and then you can fly the airplane, aviate, and then you know know where you are, figure out where you are, navigate, and communicate. Talk to ATC. Tell them what's going on. Hey, I'm I'm kind of getting getting a little disoriented up here. I need some help, and just tell ATC what's going on. If if, if you're doing that and you uh, put the foggles on, mm -hmm. but you're in VMC. Uh, mm -hmm. You're still responsible for uh, watching out for traffic. You would, correct? but I correct. Uh, but I used a special word there. It starts with an e. Emergency. This is an emergency okay. situation. In an emergency situation, you can deviate from whatever regulations you need to in order to ensure the safety of the flight. And if you're in that emergency situation, you dial up with ATC and you tell them you're having a problem. You're going to be become a priority. And of course, if you use the e-word, emergency, tell oh, them yeah. you're having an emergency yeah. up there, That's... or you're declaring an emergency. All bets are off. Do whatever you need Duration to do to safely hold. operate that airplane. Yep. Until you can gain a visual reference, until you can gain a horizon again, city lights, whatever it may be. These are the questions and answers we want to discuss in these flight reviews, and it's all in the question section of that AQP document. It points out the differences between training and real life. In training, it's no surprise that when you practice IMC, you're wearing a hood and you've got an instructor telling you to stay on the gauges. But in real life, you're surprised to be an IMC, you don't have an instructor sitting there, and you've got ATC in your ear telling you to maintain VFR. You can only maintain VFR by looking outside. You just became a statistic. Step through each of these topics and questions and read the paragraphs for each of these scenarios in the AQP document. The whole motivation behind this grassroots AQP movement is to save lives. We don't need or want regs to change or government intervention, none of that. We can fix this on our own as a community by starting the conversation right here about how we can change our mindset about recurrent training in general aviation. This episode centers around critical spatial disorientation and IMC after takeoff scenarios which continue to account for a large percentage of fatal GA accidents. 
If you're a pilot watching this, I encourage you to bring the AQP document to your instructor and send these videos to them so y'all can start talking about and practicing this stuff. If you're an instructor, take the AQP document, print it out, modify it, make it your own if you want, and start teaching this stuff on your flight reviews. Join this AQP grassroots movement and let's work to get this accident rate to drop. Don't forget to watch the rest of the series if you haven't and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next part. If you found this video helpful, please share it everywhere you can. We wanna see this grassroots movement get traction and help drive down that fatal accident rate in GA. And the best way to do that is share these videos everywhere you can. If you wanna support what we're doing here at Aviation 101, you can shop merch and gear on the e-store, including that brand new AQP flight review notepad. You can also join up on Cockpit Club to gain access to monthly live streams, giveaways, and exclusive content, of which are the raw footage of these briefings, flights, and debriefs. If you're interested in seeing those, they'll be released on Cockpit club soon. Until next time, everyone, I want you to stay happy, healthy, and current, but most importantly, stay proficient. Keep the shiny side up and watch those instruments if you have to. Fly safe. We'll see you in the next one.